Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over the GNS 530 Avionics Suite. This is going to mark our first episode in the GNS 530 series. So if you want to know more about that, then I think you should stay tuned for today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. So before we get started, I would like to go over what we're going to be covering in today's video. This is going to be a basic overview video or a familiarization video of the GNS 530. We're going to be going through all the different menus. We are not going to be getting into the functionality of each of the menus. We're going to be saving that for a different episode. And as always, if this video helps you out today, be sure to go down below, hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. Oh, and by the way, we are using the PMS 50 mod for the GNS 530. Links will be down below in the description, so be sure to check that out as well. As I was saying, we have a GNS 530 on the top and the GNS 430 on the bottom. Now, a lot of people may not know the difference, and really, the only difference that I can see is the size. So the GNS 430 is just a smaller version of the 530 that we have up top. One thing to note that if you do have a setup like this with a 530 and a 430, all of your comms on the 530 as well as your nav frequencies on the 530 are all going to be your COM1 and NAV1. Everything down here on the 430 is going to be COM2 and NAV2. Let's start out on the left hand side of the GNS 530 and we will walk all the way around to the other side. To swap between your standby and primary frequencies, we're just going to tap the button over here on the left hand side of the comm or the left hand side of the nav and that'll swap between our standby and primary frequency. To change the standby frequency in either the comm section or the nav section, we first need to highlight or put the cursor in the correct section that we want to change. To do that, we're going to come down here to the left lower rotating knob and we're just going to press in on the inner knob. That's going to change the position of our highlight here and that will switch between either COM or NAV1. Once you highlight the correct one that you want to change, you can then use your inner and outer rotating scroll knobs to attain the correct frequency. The outer knob is going to change your bigger numbers on the left hand side of the decimal and the inner knob is going to change your right hand numbers on the right hand side of the decimal. Once you get to the frequency you'd like, then you can hit the transfer button over here on the left and it will swap that frequency for you. To change the volumes on either nav or com, you can just use the rotators right to the left of the transfer button. Going across the bottom, we have a couple soft keys down here. The first one is our CDI button. This is going to switch either between VLOC or NAV mode and GPS mode. The next button in is our OBS button and we will get more into using the OBS features a little bit later in the series. To the right of that we have a message soft key and as you can see we have a message right here so if you press on that message it'll bring up all the messages that we have available and of course we do not have any flight plan today so it's just letting us know that. To the right of that we have our flight plan button and if we tap on that it will get to our flight plan menu. So scroll through the different flight plan menus we're going to be using the lower right hand knob on the GPS unit. The inner knob is going to scroll between the active flight plan and the flight plan catalog. This is where we're going to be able to store multiple different flight plans here. Again, we'll be going over this later in the series. The next menu that we have is the VNAV function. And this is going to give us some basic information for VNAV. No, this is not going to automatically descend our plane for us, but only give us some good information. And again, we will be going over this once we're up in the air, because then it's going to start populating a bunch of different info in here that we can use for our vertical navigation on our descent. To the right of that is our procedure button. And if we tap on that, here's where we're going to be able to select our approach, arrival and departures. And again, to scroll through any of these menus, we're going to be using the lower right hand rotating knob and we're going to be using the outer scroll wheel 
to scroll between either arrival, approach, or departure. All right, so that takes care of all the soft keys at the bottom of the GNS 530. Now we're gonna get to the scroll knob over here on the right. A lot of people start getting confused when they start flipping through some of the different menus using these scroll knobs and they get lost as to where they are. So I'm gonna to try to break this down and explain this to somebody if this is your first time looking at the GNS 530. So I may not be using correct terminology here, but this is gonna better help you understand. So if we take a look at the bottom of the GNS 530, we have a menu here that says nav. And to the right of that menu, we have a couple different little boxes here. So the way I like to explain this is I like to use the analogy of a book. So the menu navigation is going to kind of refer to a chapter within a book. And then you have all these different bars over here to the right are gonna represent pages that you can flip through within that chapter. So now that I've explained that to you in that way, to flip through different chapters of the book, we're gonna be using the outer scroll knob over here on the right. To flip through different pages of that chapter, we're always gonna be using the inner scroll knob over here. For instance, on our navigation chapter, we're on our first page. If we use the inner scroll knob to scroll to the next page, we can now see different information that's gonna populate for us. Here we have a terrain map, we have a traffic map, and we also have another navigation menu. I'm not sh quite sure what this is, but we don't have a flight plan program, so maybe that's why. Also keep in mind that within these pages of these chapters, we're also able to customize those pages for our liking. For instance, we're on the second page of the navigation chapter. If we hit the menu button over here, we have a couple options that we can actually change here. So if we don't wanna see any of this information over here, we can turn the data on or we can turn the data off. So we're gonna be able to do that for each of the different pages within these chapters. Again, we will get into all of these in the future episodes. So the next menu or the next chapter that we can scroll through is our waypoint chapter. As you can see, we have many, many more pages that we can flip through within this chapter. Here we can either enter an ICAO of an airport here and it will give us a lot of information below. You can also incorporate this with our flight plan and you can scroll through the different pages of this menu here but because we don't have a flight plan programmed in, it's not gonna really give us much information. Now here's where people can get messed up. If we leave off on this page and switch to a different chapter, if we go back to that waypoint chapter, you can see we are still on that exact same page. We do not start back at the beginning. So I think that's where people can get confused about where they left off. So the next chapter that we have to go to is the auxiliary chapter. Nothing to see here. I really never mess with that one. So the next menu that we have is the nearest menu. And the first page of the nearest menu is gonna give us all the different airports that are closest to us. And these are gonna be in order of distance. So as you can see on this page, we have tower frequencies, the bearings, the distance, the approach, as well as runway lengths. The other thing that you'll see over here on the right is that we have a slider bar. Because of that, we have a lot more information down below that we need to be able to view. So anything to do with the flight plan or waypoints or anything like that is gonna be using the lower right-hand knob. So if we push in on the inner knob, that's gonna bring up our cursor here. And with that cursor, we can now use the outer knob to scroll through and all the way down through the different airports. Again, this menu is gonna be very, very handy if you would like to do a direct to route to any of these airports. All you would have to do is highlight the airport and hit the direct to button, and then you can set a direct course right to that airport. Once you have that cursor populated, you can no longer use your inner knob to scroll through the different pages of the chapter that you're in. So to be able to do that again, you need to remove the cursor from the screen. So we're just gonna reverse the process and tap in on the inner knob and that cursor will then disappear. At that point, we can then use that inner knob again to scroll through the different pages 
of the chapter. The next page over, we have nearest intersection, nearest NDBs, nearest VORs, and we have nearest airspaces. So the nearest menu is gonna be very, very helpful to us while we're in flight, making things a little bit easier if we need to change direction, course. So moving up the side here, we have the enter button, the clear button, and we have the menu button. The clear button is actually gonna do a couple different things for us uh, on our main maps here. If we hit the clear button, you'll see a minus one populate down here in the lower left-hand corner. That's going to be the level of declutter that is going to apply to our screen. If you continue hitting that, you'll notice that you will continue going all the way down. I think it goes down to minus three. And the next one should be back to normal and it will pull back up all the different air spaces. Above that, we have the menu button and this is gonna allow us to change any of the different fields within the pages of these chapters. Above that is the direct to button. That's pretty self-explanatory. And then we have the range in or out feature. On the GNS 530, we do not have capabilities of setting any altitudes or anything like that. So that pretty much takes care of the overview of the GNS 530. All right, I think that's gonna wrap us up for today. Thanks everybody for joining us. If you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comments section. And if you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.